Muhammad claimed that the Bible contains prophecies that confirm him as a prophet. But according to the Bible, Muhammad was the most obvious false prophet in history. Let's look at one of the many ways Muhammad was a false prophet according to the Bible, a book that Muhammad appealed to as proof of his prophethood. In John 14, 6, Jesus famously declared, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. In John 10, Jesus claims to be both the door for his sheep as well as their shepherd. In verses 7 through 10, he says, Truly, truly, I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. So, Jesus is the door. If anyone enters by Jesus, he'll be saved. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Hmm, steal, kill, and destroy. Who does that sound like? But Jesus came so that we may have life and have it abundantly. In verse 1, Jesus says, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. Now, Muhammad was literally a thief and a robber, but Jesus is talking about people offering some way to get to God that isn't through him, through Jesus, the one who claimed to be the way, the truth, and the life, and confirmed his message by rising from the dead. Jesus says that if you try to get to God some other way, you're a thief and a robber. One of the most obvious signs that Muhammad was a false prophet then was all the different ways to get to God that he offered his followers. Let's take a quick look at five of Muhammad's different ways to get to God. There are many more. As a general rule, anytime Muhammad wanted something from his followers, or anytime he wanted his followers to do something, he would just say, let me do such and such to you, or you do such and such for me, and you're guaranteed paradise. And they would fall for it every time. Let me give you five examples. First, you were guaranteed paradise if Muhammad sucked on your tongue. Musnad Ahmed 16,245 says that Muhammad would suck on the tongues and lips of little boys, and Muhammad explained why. He said he guaranteed that if he sucked on a little boy's tongue or lips, that little boy's tongue or lips would never be tormented by hellfire. So Muhammad was saying that if he sucked on a little boy's tongue or lips, that little boy was guaranteed paradise. Second, you were guaranteed paradise if you memorized a list of names. Sahih al-Bukhari, 7392. Narrated Abu Huraira, Allah's messenger said, Allah has 99 names, 100 less 1. And he who memorized them all by heart will enter paradise. To count something means to know it by heart. Just memorize some names. So easy. Third, you were guaranteed paradise if you died while slaughtering unbelievers in the name of Allah. Sahih al-Bukhari, 2787. Allah guarantees that he will admit the mujahid, the jihadi, in his cause into paradise if he is killed. Otherwise, he will return him to his home safely with rewards and war booty. Notice, that's a double guarantee. If you slaughter unbelievers in the name of Allah, you're either going to win or you're going to lose. If you win, you take all their stuff and their wives and daughters become your sex slaves. If you lose, you go to paradise where you'll get lots of virgins. You win either way. Muhammad really understood his audience, didn't he? Side note, anytime a Muslim was taken captive, he wasn't killed and he didn't return with rewards and war booty. But Allah guaranteed that those were the only two options. You would either be killed or you would return safely with rewards and war booty. So every time a Muslim was taken captive, he was proving that Muhammad was a liar making false guarantees. Fourth, you were guaranteed paradise if you guaranteed your private parts, not to Allah, but to Muhammad. Sahih al-Bukhari, 6807. 
narrated Sahal bin Sa'd, the Prophet said, Whoever guarantees me the chastity of what is between his legs, i.e. his private parts, and what is between his jaws, i.e. his mouth, his tongue, I guarantee him paradise. Muhammad didn't say the chastity of. The translator added that to make it sound less creepy. Muhammad just said, Whoever guarantees me what is between his legs and what is between his jaws, I guarantee him paradise. Whatever you think he meant by that, it's another path to paradise. Fifth, you were guaranteed paradise because Jews and Christians will take your place in hell. Sahih Muslim 6665. Abu Musa reported that Allah's messenger said, when it will be the day of resurrection, Allah would deliver to every Muslim, a Jew or a Christian, and say, that is your rescue from hellfire. Sahih Muslim 6666. Abu Burda reported on the authority of his father that Allah's apostle said, no Muslim would die, but Allah would admit in his stead a Jew or a Christian in hellfire. Sahih Muslim 6668. Abu Burda reported Allah's messenger as saying, there would come people amongst the Muslims on the day of resurrection with as heavy sins as a mountain, and Allah would forgive them and he would place in their stead the Jews and the Christians. You hear that, Muslims? You can have sins as heavy as a mountain, and you've got nothing to worry about because Allah is going to punish me, D. Wood, for what you've done. Who's your savior now? So according to Muhammad, there are all kinds of ways to get to paradise. Just let him suck on your tongue or memorize a list or go out and get killed while slaughtering unbelievers or promise him your private parts or sit back and let Allah punish Jews and Christians for your sins. So many fake doors. According to Jesus, Muhammad was a thief and a robber, a deceiver, a fake, a fraud, a false prophet who only came to steal, kill, and destroy. Can you think of anything Muhammad could have possibly done to make it more obvious that he was a false prophet? He was the most obvious false prophet in history. You can make a list of everything a false prophet can do to show that he's a false prophet. Muhammad did it all. Why do so many people believe him? Because false prophets know their audience. They know what sort of guarantees to make in order to get what they want. So we've got one true door and many fake doors. We've got one good shepherd and a lot of thieves. What does Jesus say in verse 11 of John 10? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. My Muslim friends, do you seriously want to promise your private parts to a pretend prophet whose only purpose is to destroy you? You really want to lay down your life for the most obvious false prophet in history so that you can ignore the good shepherd who laid down his life for you?